Jamal Williams had his welcome presser with the New Orleans Saints after he and the Detroit Lions could not come to a contractual agreement in free agency. He talked about what the Lions offered him as well. We'll get into what was said and what everything means right here on the DSN News Desk. What's good, Detroit Sports Nation? I am Eric Vincent. Your host here at the DSN News Desk. Happy St. Patrick's Day. We appreciate you being here. And we got a little bit more free agency news we got to talk about with the Detroit Lions, uh, specifically with Jamal Williams. Uh, He officially had his introductory presser today with the New Orleans Saints, where he talked about the free agency process and a lot of the detail that regarded his conversation with the Lions, which obviously did not end in terms agreed to where he would return and remain with the Detroit Lions. Didn't work out that way, and knowingly in free agency, when your team is doing well and they're making good moves, the fans are happy. There's a lot of optimism in the air. These are one of those times where it's a little more sour and it's a little more sad, and this isn't the oh-so-happy part of free agency because leaving and cutting ties with some of the more important players to your franchise success is never easy. And seeing some of the details, seeing some of his emotion in the presser that he had with New Orleans kind of felt pretty bad. Like in the presser, he quoted and said that the offer that he was given by the Lions was just disrespectful and he didn't think it was worth what he got. He kind of bet on himself. We have a write up on our website, actually, at DetroitSportsNation.com. If you want to check it out, great write up by W.G. Brady. Um, the deal that he agreed to with the Saints was for $12 million for three years. But the report is, according to Dave Burkett of the Free Press, the Lions offered Williams a contract pretty similar to the one that was agreed to by David Montgomery, the running back that was pried away from the Bears. So the money was there. The opportunity was there. And regardless of who it was from, whether it was Jamal himself or his agent, whoever in his party in his camp thought that that was not good enough for what he deserved. That was him trying to take advantage of his lightning in a bottle. This is his best season that he's had as a pro. You set a franchise record for touchdowns. You went over a thousand yards. Team went over uh, 500. I understand him wanting to get a little bit more than maybe he thought he deserved, or maybe not thought he deserved, because I'm sure he believes that he deserves everything that he wants. And I get that. I'm not mad at Jamal for that at all. I just understand why the Lions chose to go in a different direction. I I get it. Like, if he thought that this was his last chance, because think about it, as a running back at his age, this is probably his last chance to get that mega million dollar deal that he's always wanted, maybe as a pro. And for running backs, it's kind of harder for those deals to come along. And if they weren't able to come to agreement when six million per for three years was on the table and he was looking for more than that, the Lions did the right thing in letting him walk. They did the right thing by letting him walk. Jamal Williams was a great piece to this franchise. I spoke about this before. I think the biggest piece that will be missed in a part of his game is going to be his leadership, his veteran influence in the locker room, his personality and his connectability with the team. I think that's going to be missed tremendously more so than the production itself. Because Jamal, while he is a very productive back, he's a very physical runner, and he's an asset. No matter what you want to say about him, no matter how you look at him, he's an asset to have on a team. It looked like towards the middle of the season that he kind of struggled with dealing with being the focal point back for the duration of the season because DeAndre Swift was getting hurt a lot. And we were expecting Swift to be the number one guy going into the season. Remember Deuce Staley talking about, yeah, Swift can have a 1,000 yards rushing and a 1,000 yards receiving. And that didn't happen because of obvious reasons. So he got hurt, and a lot of the load had to be relied on by Jamal. And he was good in some aspects, but not every game. There were a lot of lows where he had where the running game kind of just went quiet, and the offense was relied on for Jared Goff to kind of carry them with his arm, which is not the way you want this Lions offense to be formed. So with that being considered, looking at what Jamal did in terms of being a every down back, I don't think that's necessarily his best attribute at this point. I think he's a complimentary back. 
I think he works in a two-back system like what they were trying to do with Swift, and I think they'll have that when he brings over to New Orleans as well. But in terms of what the Lions did, I'm totally okay with it. I'm okay with it because you ended up giving more money to a younger and a more talented back. Jamal was not great in terms of pass coverage, or not coverage, but pass reception as a running back. That wasn't his game. He was a north and south between the tackle runner. He wasn't very shifty. Again, he was very high collision type back, not very elusive with his running. And that's okay. Like he worked, what works for him works well for Jamal Williams. It makes him the great back that he is. But you are getting a much more dynamic and a much more complete player in David Montgomery when he comes here. I undersold it on the last news desk episode. I got to apologize to Mr. Montgomery and to the fans. I apologize to y'all because I've done my research. I've done my homework and I see, and I'm looking a little bit further from what I remember. He's a little more shifty than I thought. He does have a lot more game breaking ability than I anticipated. And then I may be seen. I watched a little bit of Chicago bear basketball or football. Excuse me. I watched a little bit of Chicago bear football last season. And from what I saw, I didn't see a super elusive back, you know, every single down. But a lot of games I missed, this guy looks like he's got some big potential with this offense. Again, I think behind this offensive line with the creativity of Dan Campbell and the creativity of Ben Johnson, whatever they can create with this offense, I believe can be special with him as the focal point. I think he's that dangerous. And I think having Swift with him, too, is going to be very complimentary to what he does. They're very... I don't want to say they're similar, but they do present a somewhat similar dynamic in terms of their pass catching ability and their explosiveness if they're out in open space. So if you have that between the two and they're getting in space to put pressure on their defenders, this running game is going to be even more dangerous than what we saw last season. And that doesn't necessarily mean Montgomery is going to pass the touchdown record like Jamal just did. It's not going to take that. But if he rushes for, I believe he get at least 1,200 yards on his own with complimenting, complimenting you with four or 500 yards receiving as well, that's a W. And you're not getting that from Jamal Williams. You're just not. And that's the unfortunate part of free agency. The Lions went into free agency with a plan, and I think they're executing it flawlessly. And even with losing Jamal Williams, who was an important part of this franchise. We're not going to question that. We're not going to deny that. But letting that go and upgrading the way they did was a flawlessly job, flawlessly done job by Brad Holmes. I'm absolutely ecstatic about what he's done so far. To me, I believe this is the best free agency that Brad Holmes has had since he's been the GM of the Lions. This is easily his best free agency. His first two years were predicated on one two-year deals for players that would just help save their books because they were over on bad contracts and with players that they didn't want on their roster. So they were really predicated on relying on addition by subtraction pretty much. And then the second year, a lot more one year deals. You go through some of the names. I mean, go back to 2021, you know, signing a Tyrell Williams. They brought in Jamal Williams on a two year deal. Tim Boyle, uh, Brashard Perriman, Khalif Raymond, Charles Harris and Zaloni comes in on a one year deal. Like that was all 2021. A few other names that they had to, but again, it, they played it pretty reserved. It was not so much reliant on trying to build the roster in the immediate uh, moment right there in 2021. 2022, still kind of following the same mold. DJ Shark, Garrett Griffin at tight end, Mike Hughes on a one year deal. These are all one year deals. Uh, Jared Davis, Deshaun Elliott. Devin Funches, Isaiah Bugs, who just got re-signed for a two-year deal. And, of course, they released Trey Flowers. So, again, this was another year where it was addition by subtraction. And now, in this offseason, in this free agency, adding Cameron Sutton, bringing back Anzalone, which is a little controversial, but adding Montgomery, bringing Kaminsky back, Mosley from San Francisco, Bugs. Uh, bringing Will Harris back, Glasgow, getting him from the Denver Broncos to plug up on your offensive line, and even getting a kicker. They've addressed every single offseason they needed in free agency alone. This is easily Brad Holmes' best free agency, and it came at the expense of losing Jamal Williams, which I think Lions fans should be okay with at this point. I really do. I think this is a fantastic 
free agency period. And we wish Jamal Williams nothing but the best in New Orleans. It's no slander. I know a lot of people were online and social media feeling a way about him saying that he's happy to be able to play with postseason proven players. There's nothing wrong with that, guys. It probably does feel different. There's nothing wrong with that. It's no shade. Best of luck to Jamal Williams. Lions fans appreciate everything that you've done, and we wish you nothing but the best with the Saints. But talk to me in the comment section. I'd love to hear your feedback. What were your thoughts on Jamal Williams' comments? Do you think they were out of line? Do you think that the Lions maybe should have done what it took to bring him back? Or are you okay with them agreeing to uh, leave at this point? I'd love to hear your feedback. Talk to me in the comment section. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Making our way up to 7,000 subscribers on our YouTube page. And we can make that happen with your support. Tap in on our social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of the above. Search and follow Detroit Sports Nation and lock in with me as well at I am Eric Vincent. Thank you all so much for your time. We greatly appreciate you being here. Happy St. Patrick's Day again. Enjoy safely. And we will see you again right here soon with another update from the DSN News Desk. Peace.